Hello guys, this is Panzermeister 36 and today's video is going to be a quick little tutorial about how to make some dusty and muddy weathering on your tracks. For a little while I've been struggling with making a technique that I think looks nice. Giving nice results in the end, usually I end up with something a little too brown or too light and I don't think it looks realistic. But now I've kind of got that technique down so I decided to make a little tutorial here to share with you guys. So for the actual weathering you only need a couple products. Basically you've got some paint, some enamel products and some pigments. These paints here I'll use for the base coat in the tracks. I use about a 50-50 mix just to make like a brownish gray color. I've got some enamel products here, basically a lighter wash and a darker wash for kind of dry and wet effects. And the same goes for the pigments here. I've got a lighter color for dusty and dry effects and I've got a darker color to kind of blend in the wet effects with some earthy colors. And to answer a question I get frequently, there are other companies out there that make similar products. You can use whatever you like. You can use other nail products, other pigments. You can probably use oil paint washes for the nail products I'm using here. You can use your pastel chalks. It'll probably work in a very similar way. Just use whatever you have on you, whatever you like, whatever you're comfortable with. You can even use different colors of washes and pigments if you're going for different colors on your tracks. So for the first step, I'm going to apply a base coat of paint to the tracks. Basically, this is a 50-50 mix approximately of this NATO Black and Japan Ground Self-Defense Force Brown from Tamiya. I thin it with lacquer thinner here because I find that just makes it spray better. You can use whatever paints you like, you can use a different color if you want, you can use a different brand, whatever works for you best. This is just the base color. I find this mix makes a nice color that's kind of like a grayish brown color but really dark. So it's a solid base color but also in any places where it pokes through it looks almost like a chipped paint color. I'm not too metallic because I'm not too much of a fan of really bright metallic shiny effects. Now we can begin with the actual weathering of the tracks. What I'm aiming for is a kind of modulated and varied effect where I have some areas of lighter, dusty, and dry effects and some areas of darker effects and also want some transitions between the two. So I've chosen some colors here that I think will give me a realistic amount of contrast without looking too similar. So all these colors here, even though they're quite different, they all have a little bit of a grayish hue to them. So when I apply them together on the tracks, they will look unified and they look like they belong together. They won't have too much contrast to make them look like just kind of random colors that are thrown on. Now for example, here's another mix of very similar colors, you got the same effect going. But if you look at these colors, they're more yellow and they're more rich in their tone. They all have a little more saturation to them, so they're more just kind of like solid colors. Again, here are the two mixes. The bottom one is the one I use in this tank, and the top one is the one I just showed you. And then if I were to say switch some of these colors around, and use the darker colors from the saturated mix I just showed you, and the lighter ones from my own mix, if you look at them like this, I don't think they would look like they work as well together. Because... The uh, darker ones are way too dark and contrasty compared to the lighter ones here, which are kind of light and a little boring almost. Especially the pigments here. The dark brown pigment is very, very dark, and the industrial dust is very, very light. So for this reason, that's why I chose the brown Russian earth instead of the dark brown pigment, because it's a little bit lighter and a little more grays you'll see here compared to the dark brown pigment. So it looks like it goes better with the industrial dust, which is why I chose these two colors. So I think the dark brown pigment would go much better with a more saturated and more kind of colorful dusty color, which here is the airfield dust, which is more yellow than the industrial dust, which is kind of like pale and gray. So back to the actual weathering of the tracks after that little tangent there. I'm using a quarter inch angler shader, which is a brush here, which I think is very nice for applying pigments because it's kind of, uh, it's, it's fairly large. You can get a lot of pigment on there. It's also kind of short, so the bristles don't move around too much. And it's a little stiff too, so you can just kind of really blend stuff on there. It's nice for doing this and also I use it for blending oil paints as well. So I'm just kind of stippling on the industrial dust here to get a nice kind of dusty color on the tracks. As you can see it's just kind of messy, you don't have to be too perfect because there's going to be more products on top of this. We'll kind of blend it together. And any extra pigment that goes down on the little paper towel here I just kind of fold it into a V shape and pour it back into the jar afterwards to save it up. Now I'm using a stiff brush here to flick on some of this brown mud spatter speckling effect over the tracks to kind of blend in the uh, the pigments I just put on there and also to kind of add another color. If you, if you want to make a speckling effect, it really is just kind of like a thick wash if you don't have access to one, just take a, like a light dusty wash color and just put some more dusty pigment into it and then I'll make it thicker and then it will be able to kind of speckle like this nicely otherwise it'll just kind of spray everywhere in big globs. You need a, a thin mixture with enough pigment in it to get this nice effect. As you can see it kind of holds on the pigments adds some kind of contrast in there, just kind of blends it together, also breaks up the uniform look of it. So you can see now we have, instead of just dust, we have dust and a little bit darker effect. 
Now for an even darker effect, I'm going to apply the dark road clay effect, which I think is a nice color. I really like this one a lot. It's a nice dark gray-green color, and I think it looks really nice for some kind of wet effects. So I'm applying it to random areas where I figure I need some more contrast, and I want to make it look like there's been some wetness that the tank's driven over, like a puddle or something, or maybe even just that part of the track hasn't really dried yet. Other parts have. I'm just kind of being random about how I apply this, because I do want it to look actually random. I don't want to have, like, every five links of a wet section. I want it to be completely random and just look natural. So over here I think, oh, maybe some wetness here, apply it there, and over here some more wetness and just kind of being random. And you can make one side look more wet than the other, it doesn't really matter. But I'm also applying it on the inside of the tracks here just to, again, make more contrast. And this is the result of the wet effects on the tracks. As you can see, we now have some more contrast in there. And I think it's still a little bit wet, actually, the products so when I took this shot here, so it gets a little more faint when it's dry. But for the next step here, I applied the tracks to the tank, actually, put them on, and prepared for the final step, which was just doing a little bit of dusting with this brown Martian Earth pigment. I think this color looks a lot like just dirt, fresh dirt, not really wet, not really dry, just kind of like neutral dirt. So I'm using it to kind of blend in the wetter effect areas with the dusty areas. And also just applying it to, again, to random areas like as you do, just to get that natural random effect of just different colors on the tracks overall. So as you can see, I'm just kind of dusting it on using a little brush here. Blending in these wet areas around the track here. And actually afterwards, I did go back and apply a little bit more of the wet effect to some areas, like right here. This is the dark road clay effect again. And really, I'm just trying to layer in more products here and get kind of more of a blended transition with the dirty pigment I was just applying. And now this is the effect you get once all the products are dry. As you can see on the upper links around the idler wheel there, we have the wet effects from the dark clay effect, and then lower down on the tracks, kind of underneath the idler, you can see the dusty effects showing through. I'm very happy with the effect I've achieved in the end here. It's exactly what I was aiming for, and it looks really nice. And I'm also happy with how kind of focused and pure this effect is. Sometimes I end up using a whole bunch of different products and mixing and layering this back and forth and it gets kind of confusing and excessive not only for you guys watching in a video but also for myself if I want to do the technique again later. But this one, it's very repeatable because I can just do the same thing but just pick different colors of pigment and wash. Kind of like I was showing earlier, I had that kind of yellowish mix compared to the mix I used here. If the vehicle here didn't have a white wash and was more yellow then I would have gone with that mix. But since this vehicle here is kind of lighter and more white, I went with the lighter gray mix of pigments and washes and stuff like that because that way all the elements of the vehicle look like they work together and belong together as a whole. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope it was helpful in some way. Maybe you learned some new techniques, maybe some new ideas. If you have any questions or comments, please always feel free to post them below. I always like to hear how you guys weather your tanks and share your ideas below. It's always awesome. Also, a big thank you goes out to my Patreons. They're helping me out here by giving me a few dollars every month. Big thanks to Samuel Murphy and Ricky from Ryan's Painting. If you're thinking about joining or just like to support me in any way, it would mean a lot to me if you go over there and just give me like $1 every month. It helps a lot. And helps me buy some more products and paints to do videos like this. And also, if I get enough money like that, I'll be able to do more product reviews for you guys in the future, which will be awesome. So, as always, thanks for watching very much. This is Pansmice36, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.